accommodation in as you travel. <laughs> okay, so I've had wonderful experiences in Sicily where I met every single owner of the places I rented. I highly recommend you do this. I know people think it's so great not to meet the people, but here in France, I haven't met any of the owners and there's been a lot of problems with the apartments. I don't know what the internet information is. It was on a little piece of plastic turned upside down under the television. No one told me it was there. Um, drains that don't work, people that don't respond who are who own the apartments. This one, there's no response at all. Um, if you call them, doesn't speak English, doesn't have anybody to speak English with you. So I just, not that I expect English, but I do if I'm English speaking and you want me to know how to use your expensive appliances, but you have a little caveat at the bottom of the information that I had to translate in Google Translate that there's a thousand dollars that you might have to pay if you screw up an appliance. No. So my recommendation is don't rent an apartment where you don't meet the owner. That means they don't care. All they want is your money. Oh, and listen to this. Yesterday, this is what happened. I got the keys out of a little box. Um, I didn't see the number on the building, so I went into the wrong building and tried to open, as I was lugging up my um, luggage in the dark on a windy staircase, totally steep and narrow, tried to get into about eight apartments with the keys that didn't work because it was the wrong building. Okay, so finally I went <laughs> to a store to get help because I don't speak French, unfortunately. I just know about 10 words. And so this nice lady figured out, she helped me. What a nice woman. The French are very friendly. It, sure, it's not like Southern Italy. <laughs> That's a whole different culture, but I've met wonderful people here, and I have a whole different video on that. This is mainly concerning owners, and I have to tell you, I've had a bad experience when I didn't meet the owner and didn't get the information I needed. I didn't even know there was Wi-Fi in the apartment. I didn't know where the bed was. They said there was a full bed. It's It came out of the wall. They didn't mention that. <laughs> Well, never was it mentioned the wall slides out of the bed, slides out of the wall. They said there was a button. I'm like, they didn't. So anyway, what I'm saying is there's a lot of people out there that just want your money. They don't care about your experience. Personally, since I'm a full-time traveler, I only want to give my money to the people that actually care and honestly, every owner I met in Sicily was wonderful. They cared about my experience. Um, the places were clean and wonderful. And so this is what has led me to, to believe and know that in other places where they're just like, oh, you'll find it, you'll figure it out. Like, I've had all these questions. It would have been nice to know I had Wi-Fi yesterday, but nope, no message back. Um... Couldn't get the check-in details until an hour before I got here. I don't have Wi-Fi in transit because I have a foreign SIM card. I explained that to him. The owner of this apartment didn't matter. You're only going to get it when I say you're going to get it. Like, there's no reason to be that way. So, before you book something on booking... Ask the person about the check-in details if you're going to meet them in person. If you don't care about meeting the person, the owner in person, fine. Do it your way. But I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to not be met. Uh, have to get people's help in a foreign country where I don't speak the language. I'm better at navigating in Italian because I was there for seven weeks. Um. So these are things to think of, especially when you're a solo traveler. I've got to tell you, you know, there's no one else helping you. You're on your own. 
and you know there's people that travel in couples like it's a whole different deal you've got two people working on stuff so you've got two brains but when you're by yourself and i'm not saying don't be because i love traveling by myself but i just want to warn you um when you rent an apartment, it's a lot more difficult than just renting a room where you're going to meet the person. So like on booking, I don't do Airbnb that much, but I have if I've done a private room in a, in a city. And so, of course, you're always going to meet that person. But I'm just deciding today I'm not renting any more apartments where I'm not going to meet the owner. And if that means I have to pay more and stay in a hotel, then so be it, because I'm not going to go through what I went through yesterday, trying to unlock doors in a building that it wasn't the right building. It would have been solved in three minutes of the owner meeting me and telling me which, oh, and then when I finally did get the right building, um, there's nothing on the door. The instructions were the, the door to the apartment is opposite the stairway on the fourth floor you get up there and there's four doors and they're all opposite the stairway it's like oh so now I gotta try every one of them so that was fun um so I'm done with that <laughs> I'm not doing that again so here after 17 years of travel I'm learning new things and sharing them with you and I'm passionate about helping other people because this is the kind of thing you're not going to be thinking about like, I'm really surprised that he just couldn't give me the check-in details until it was, okay, it was two hours before I was going to check in. And that's it. Two hours. And I had explained that I wouldn't be connected to Wi-Fi to get those check-in details. He was afraid I was going to check in early. There's nobody here. There was nobody here before. I couldn't check in early. I explained that. I said, I'm coming on the train. I won't be there until 4.30, which was the check-in time. Didn't believe me. It's like, why would I lie about that? I don't care if you've had trouble with other people. I'm telling you the truth. And there was no one here before. They didn't have to deal with anyone checking out. So it's like, to me, that's not caring about the people you're going to do business with I've had my own business for, what, 39 years. You have to treat your customers well. You don't just treat them like a dollar sign or a euro sign or you don't care about their experience. You just don't do that. So let's not give those people our money. There's plenty of accommodation. Like, I probably could have found another place. Maybe I could have canceled, but it was a non-refundable one. That's another thing. I don't think I'm going to do any more non-refundables <laughs> because um, I like this little town in Reims. It's spelled R-E-I-M-S in France. Um, much lower prices than in Paris. But what was available was not very good when I was booking. So I had this apartment for three nights. So this is like... 40% less than what you pay in Paris. But after all of the, <laughs> what I had to go through to get in this place, I would never rent this place again. So um, here's the thing. When you're traveling, so the upshot is, I just want to help you get good accommodation. Either go with people that know, like you can travel with me on one of my retreats. Or if you're doing it yourself, before you press that booking button, I would recommend having it be that you can cancel because you want to be able to communicate with the owner. This is after 17 years of travel. If they don't want to communicate with you, they don't care about you. They just want your money. So um, keep that in mind. So if something goes wrong, you're not going to get any help. They're not going to answer you, which is what happened to me. This is like a rare thing, but 
I'm not going to let it ruin my experience. It almost did. I was almost ready to just go back to a hotel in Paris because I was so disgusted. But there's some things I want to do here. It's a beautiful town. It's the center of the Champagne area in France. En Francais. And um, I met a nice gal, a uh, young woman on the train. We had a lovely chat. She's a design student, and we talked about Rome. She lived there, and we had a lovely conversation. She gave me all these tips for being here. So my last few days in Europe are going to be good. This is not going to ruin it. Um, but I just want you to know <laughs> that this life is not easy, and you don't always get the perfect place. But I do want to point out that... Every single time I've met the owner, I can't think of one time where I met the owner and it wasn't right. See, if you meet the owner, they care because they're willing to give their time. This COVID thing has made a lot of people lazy. Oh, yeah, just go get the keys. You don't know where the building is. You don't know the language. You don't know what if it doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't. And then you're dragging your, I don't know where the light thing is to turn on. I was dragging my luggage up in the dark. I could have, what if I fell? Um, not that I worry about that, but it was a steep, narrow staircase that wind, winds around. Like, no. <laughs> There's a lot of no elevator situations in Europe, so don't expect it. Um, that's why when I recommend something like a hotel room, it's going to have an elevator. You're not going to be dragging your luggage up, so... Take my referrals seriously because I've lived through it and I've had some bad experiences, this being one of them. <laughs> but I wanted to enlighten people about what happens on the road. It's not all great. Um, so have a wonderful day. I'm off to enjoy and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Hey, like, subscribe. If people can benefit from this, if they're going to Europe, if they're a beginning solo travel in, in particular, because it is really different when you're by yourself and you're taking care of all these details solo without any help. So keep on traveling and I'll see you in the next video.